Well, this Oscar is just an Oscar, and an Oscar is, as you know, the ultimate award that a filmmaker can dream of. So I guess that that says it all. Um, um, I've been very fortunate these last years. I've worked with incredible directors and, uh, and I have many nominations here, um, which I never won. And this year, I, I really thought I would split my votes with Imitation Game and Grand Budapest, but obviously Grand Budapest made it for me. And, uh, and the sound sucks here. It's really bad. <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> all is fine. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to come start down here with one and then come back to 259. Congratulations. Thank you. We have a Facebook question, a fan question from Cheryl Jones. How would you describe the moment when you heard your name being read? Um, intense, warm, um, relieved, happy. Should I go on? <laughs> no, those are all great words. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to go to 259 and then 172. Hi, congratulations. Um, the Grand Budapest Hotel doesn't take place in any specific country or time period. And I was wondering um, how that informed your writing. And also, will you be working on the next Roman Polanski movie? Well, that, that was the idea that, that Wes and I would try and create a sound that would belong to this fictional country, which was Zubarovka. Um, as you know, you can also drink Zubarovka with moderation. Um, the, the, um, the music that you can hear from Switzerland to Russia and to the Balkans is made of uh, a great instrumentarium. The instruments, you can find them, are very various, and we try to kind of crystallize them into one sound. So that's what we try to do to achieve. Um, and yes, I will work again, I think, with Roman Polanski, who is the, one of the greatest directors of, of all times. We're going to 172 and then 105. Hi, uh, Jonas from Norway. Uh, you were also nominated for Imitation Game. Which one are you the most pleased with personally? It's a very good question. Is there another question, maybe? <laughs> No, I mean, I love, I, Martin's film is a, is a, was a wonder. As you know, uh, I, I couldn't do this film because I was, I was uh, booked for another project, which was delayed, and then I could do Martin's film. And I was so inspired for, by Martin's film that it took me very little time to write the music um, with a lot of e excitement and joy. And Martin is a great artist and a very good musician himself. So working together was smooth, beautiful, and easy. Maestro, Maestro, over hold, here. Hold on one here. second. Give me a second. I'm sorry. 105, and then I have to end it. I'm sorry, with 152. Thank you. Maestro, congratulations. I know you've worked with Wes Anderson before. Can you talk a little bit about the give and take between the two of you? Uh, how much does he approve? How much does he disapprove? And how much freedom do you really get? Well, it's all, it's all him. Actually, he should have won this award. Well, you know, Wes, as any great director, is very detailed. He likes to, to be precise, uh, obsessively, but like not different from Martin Tilden or Roman Polanski or, or Jacques Audiard. They, they are great directors, and so they are very demanding, and they want everything to fit perfectly in. The thing about Wes's movies is that, and, and his previous movies we've done together, Mr. Fox and Unrest Kingdom, Music is really interwoven very strongly to the editing, to the rhythm of the film. Uh, I guess that's the most important thing in our relationship. But also, when we sit together in, in my studio, very quickly we, we get excited about ideas, and I try to give a shape to that musically very quickly. And from it's like... Uh, uh, Arborescence, you know, you find an idea that brings another one, and we really work on the same level and uh, very, very closely. Please. Alexandre, um, this is your eighth, you won on your eighth nomination. You've got to be beside yourself. I mean, for a second, you had to be fearing you were Randy Newman for a second. But what I'm wondering is, why do you think you finally won this time? 
Is it because it was a score that was easy on the ears? I mean, it's a beautiful score, but I'm just, I'm just curious. Why this, why not King's Speech, why not Argo? You know, um, each year there's five scores nominated. And uh, you do the best work you can. You don't think about the Oscars, you, be, you thought about music and the film you're working for. And then you get a nomination or not, which has happened to me, sadly, <laughs> at least one year <laughs> in the last eight years. But, um, and, and you know, the, I'm not the only composer in the world, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the only one to write film music. Uh, so there's other great composers, and sometimes they win, and they should. And, uh, but maybe, I hope I will win the next 20 Oscars. <laughs>